This is another video from FET, and here we'll be discussing self bias configuration. Now, this is the circuit given for self bias configuration. Let's just compare with the a fixed bias configuration that we already studied. So this is fixed bias configuration, and it is fixed bias because there is a battery which is biasing the circuit. So just like as if you are providing a steer to someone to climb up, so this is fixed bias. But in case of a, a self bias circuit, we do not provide any battery. It's self help, and the self help is coming from here. The voltage drop across R S will provide the biasing. As we have done uh, in the previous case also for DC analysis. We remove the capacitors or open the capacitors. We also know that the current through the gate is equal to zero. That means there will be no voltage drop in RG. So the circuit can be further simplified like this. This is eliminated. So this is connected to ground. And this is the circuit that will be solving. And since IG is zero, therefore ID is equal to IS. This is IS. Now from this closed loop, we can write the KVA equation. So plus VGS and plus VRS is equal to zero. Or VGS is equal to minus VRS. But VRS is ID into RS or IS into RS. Same thing. So VGS is equal to minus id rs and this is called the network equation now just for your information uh, let me clarify that when we talk of network networks are groups of interconnected devices so this is a network and it has a main device in the jft so this is uh, this whole thing is a network but this is a device but keeping this in mind, actually, we will have two uh, graphs. One is called the network graph, which we can draw from this relation that we just derived. This is the network graph. And the other is the device characteristics, which we plot from the uh, Shockley's equation. So this is the device char characteristics graph. And ultimately, uh, okay, this one is from here, network configuration. And this is from the Shockley's graph. So we have these two graphs, and ultimately we'll superimpose the network graph on the device curve to find the question point. So Q point uh, we can find from uh, the this line where it intersects the device curve. Now let's uh, solve example seven point two. Uh, in this, we have to determine these following six parameters. We start with the one. We start with VGSQ and IDQ. That is the uh, VGQ uh, point, and then IDQ point. Now, as we mentioned, that we have to uh, get uh, or go into this uh, graph, which is a combination of the device and the uh, network. So this is the device characteristics. This is the network characteristics. Superimposing, we need to achieve this to get to the Q point. Now the Q point is this point where it is, and both the graphs intersect. So first of all, how do we plot the network graph? We just use this equation and couple of values. Uh, Take, we take a blank uh, graph, and then if you put ID is equal to zero, ID is zero, then VG is zero. So we'll be somewhere here. Also, we know that RS is one kilo from here, one kilo. VG is minus ID RS. And when ID is zero, VG is zero, so we can mark a circle here. 
put in a circle. Similarly, uh, by taking couple of values, uh, we can plot the graph. Let's say uh, we take ID is 4 milliampere, 4 milliampere, then VG will be uh, 4 into 1 is minus 4 volt. So that means when ID is 4 back here, then VG will be minus 4. So similarly, when ID is 8, VG will be minus 8. So we can draw this 4 and minus 4 and then 8 and minus 8. And when we join this, this these lines, so this is our network equation or network graph. We found the network graph. Now we need to find the uh, device graph or device curve uh, from the Shockley's equation. We have already done in the previous two uh, uh, videos that we have solved. Basically, we take a couple of values of uh, VGS and then we plot. Uh, so like, let me show here. If you take VGS is equal to zero, put zero, then you can get ID is equal to ISS. Uh, which is 8 in this case, in the question given. And similarly, if you take uh, Vg is equal to Vp, that is minus 6, you get another set of value where I, Ig is 0. And here we are just talking of this. If you are taking Vp by 2, so Vp by 2 is minus 3, putting here, Vp is minus 6, and solving, we get Id is 2 milliampere. So 2 milliampere, when Vg is minus 3. So this is the third point. So this graph, uh, we have plotted the device graph. Now we'll superimpose these two. So you can see this was the original graph. We are superimposing only this point here, so 4 and 4. And then we can connect this. So we can connect, and this is our uh, network uh, uh, line and wherever it intersects that is our Q point. So we can say that Q point from the graph is IDQ is 2.6 milliampere and similarly VGSQ is minus 2.6 volt. So this is the uh, answer that we are expecting for part A and part B. So this is done. Now let's see part C. Part C, we have to find VDS, drain and source voltage. We know this current, we know this voltage, uh, so we can easily calculate. We also know uh, this current. So let's see. VDS, this voltage is VDD minus IDRS, IDRS minus IDRD. So 22.6 milliampere, RS is 1 kilo and RD is 3.3. So solving, we find VDS to be 8.82 volt. The next is VS. This is S. So VS is actually the voltage drop here. So we can say that VS is IDRS, uh, which is uh, 2.6 milliampere into 1 kilo is equal to 2.6 volt. Then next is Vg. This voltage here, Vg, and we know since there is no current flowing, no voltage drop here, therefore Vg will be zero. So Vg is zero since Ig is zero. And finally, Vd. This voltage Vd you can easily find by two methods. This minus the voltage drop here, that is 1. So VD is VDD minus IDRD, so 20, and this is 11.42. The other is that we can say that VD is VDSS plus VS. So I mean this voltage is voltage drop here and voltage drop here. So that way also you can find VDS. We have found 8.82, this one. And Vs also we have found 2.6. Adding the two, it is 11.42 volt. So I hope you have been able to follow this. Please let me know through your comments. Thank you.